when it comes to practice, I, I kind of do like the the serious ones because, like, I don't want those weird questions during practice. Like, I'm kind of, <laughs> I'm kind of, like, no, yeah, no, I'm trying to focus. No, I, and then, like, no, I would love to have Luke like outside of practice when I'm already trying, <laughs> like, relaxed when I don't have anything else better to do. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just have the weird questions. <laughs> Welcome to Social Kick. I'm Brian Lundquist. We got the full crew, Dr. John Mullen, Luke Paddington, and fresh at ASU, Ilya Karun. What's up, Ilya? <laughs> Nothing much. Just happy to be here. Nice, man. Well, thanks for hanging out. We, uh, we got a few quick rapid fires that we sourced from the audience before we get started uh, from uh, Cal Commit and national team member Claire Weinstein. Oh. Who's your favorite Sandpiper teammate? Ooh, that is a good one. Uh, I would say, I would, I would say Claire. I would, I would talk to her most of the time, uh, on and off deck. <laughs> Claire, you'd right. like. I'm just, just going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this one's from Lauren Wigington. Never back down. Oh, never, never what? Never give up. <laughs> All right, what spice level do you get at Dave's Hot Chicken? Uh, about mild or medium. Okay. And would you beat Maggie in a 25 underwater? Absolutely. No <laughs> question. You heard, <laughs> you heard it here first. The big thing with me is I have what people call a larger nose and a larger uh, bridge on the nose here. And then... My, I also have kind of narrow eyes is what I found out because you get like the different nose pieces and anytime I would get a larger nose piece, then it would be too wide and then it would leak in the middle. Yeah. And the great thing about the magic five goggle is that one, it's the nose piece. Um, it, it fits perfectly with me and also it allows the goggles to still be close together. So yeah. it's not rubbing on my nose and it's not so wide. It's leaking as well. So you can support Social Kick directly by picking up a pair of Magic 5 goggles using our affiliate link. Go to themagic5.com slash socialkick. Okay, so <laughs> Ilya, what is going on right now in your world? Uh, you're coming off of a great performance. I don't know if anybody would call it a breakout performance. You've been on the radar for, for a bit now, but I watched you swim at the World Cup in Toronto live fast. I think we even heard Trent and Julian with a little shock uh, with some racing this summer about like, where did this kid come from? And then you get a fourth place finish coming from, I think, eighth at the 150 at Worlds, seventh or eighth to finish fourth, killer close. Mm -hmm. Now the world's aware you're coming. Um, and here you are adjusting to a new training environment. So just give us a where, where are you at in life right now? What's going on? So right now, like, as you guys said, uh, yeah, I am a freshman at ASU, you know, different different definitely a uh, different environment coming in you know because i was at sandpiper as a just online school so i didn't actually go to a physical school so coming going like going in and out of classes uh and plus training it's a whole different experience and um the just is just like really really fun of course because uh the group environment of course at the team and um a whole new experience with the dorms as well <laughs> having roommates and stuff but it's uh it's really it's good fun all right you mentioned homeschool i know there's different things that go around about ron's group is that a requirement to be in ron's group really uh it's not a requirement we did have one person uh in in sam Piper's actually did go to school it's just that it's kind of better if you want to like completely like focus on swim it online school is much better um but yeah like uh it's not it's not really a requirement but it's just better because some of our practice times were during school times so that's why mm -hmm. is there even an option to do that in college i mean obviously like i know schools have some online courses or maybe specific ones but would you have the option to do that because i feel like that happens a lot in in prime time sports like and if like uh, quarterbacks for the football team, for example, at big time football schools, like you don't see them walking around campus. They just take all their classes online. Uh, yeah, I think, I think, uh, well, for freshman year, for sure, you do have to go to classes, but I believe as the years goes on, yeah, you can like, they have the option to have more online classes. All right. So what's been the biggest adjustment so far? Um, I'll say just like, 
like the living arrangement and like actually walking to places, you know, because I wouldn't uh, I would always I, I would have a car and drive everywhere in Vegas. But here, like I have to walk the classes and then like sleep where or like his dorm is now my new house, <laughs> you know? So it's, uh, it's definitely in like having to like share a bathroom with like three other guys. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's kind of, it's definitely different, but you know, it's all good. It's just, it's a fun experience. Where's hotter to now? Where's hotter where you came from, where you are now and what pool is better temperature wise? Uh, pool temp, uh, here ASU because the, the water is like nice and uh, like regulated yeah and it is way hotter in Arizona than Vegas <laughs> really yeah so. mm -hmm. now where it, did you it, guys he uh, has a, a ton of great swimmers and you know most notably Leon but also uh Kosh as well so where do you find yourself kind of fitting in uh leading in to to the new year um like with the with the fast swimmers, to be honest, I'm just trying to. I don't really put myself like, oh, I'm up here with Leon and stuff. Like, no, I just like I really just uh, I train with them. I try to uh, beat them every day at practice. Well, mm -hmm. try to of course, <laughs> and um, yeah, I just I just uh, follow like a training regimen. That's pretty much it. That. I want to know if there's some sort of initiation thing that's still going on. Especially when you come in with uh, the credentials that somebody like you has. Um, I mean, entering ASU, like, it was a very fast team. But I would imagine, besides, like, Leon, you know, I would imagine you hold your own still, like, really well in practice, yeah. right? And, like, that's not the case yeah. for every college freshman. There's some people that come in and different, even for a team, you know, that has uh, performed as highly as ASU, whether you're going into, you know, Cal or Texas or any of these, you know, star-studded programs. Um, mm -hmm. There's... <laughs> There's, uh, you know, some slow lanes and some fast lanes, so there's um, can be a big curve. Um, yeah, are you? What's um? I guess. Uh, do you find that to be the case already? And you know, what's uh, what's been the hardest thing that you've done in the water so far? There. Uh, by slow lanes and fast lanes, you mean like like what what lanes I'm kind of in or something like that. I just mean like uh, I would imagine that you you keep up pretty well in practice, but that's there's there's quite the adjustment for for people to join a, a you know a training group. So oh, oh, um, yeah, yeah. do you feel like do you feel like yeah you're able to like assimilate really? I mean Bob's legendary for giving hard practices, right? And we know mm -hmm. like Herb too. So mm -hmm. um, you know are are you able to like handle the training, especially coming from a sandpiper background? And like what's been the toughest thing you've encountered thus far? So yeah, in Sandpipers, we would do just long yardages, seven, eight, nine Ks. And Bob's practices, even though they might be like not as long, the intensity is really up there. Like <laughs> that's like uh, the only thing, like if it's like really fast paced, like, okay, in like 45 seconds, we got to go after we like just finished the set. Like <laughs> I'm kind of trying to get like a breather in because like I haven't really done such a uh, fast kind of fast paced. But other than that, like, uh, the other sets, I, I pretty much like handle Bob's things for sure. You know, I, we can all imagine what what you can what you're learning swimming with Leo, Hubie, Reagan, you know, under Bob, what have you. Um, but I would love to know what these guys would say about you. Yo, Ilya came to our team. He joined us, and he brought this, and we didn't realize that. Oh, he's doing this. So, what do you think you're bringing to the table that's like different to what they're doing? And maybe they made a comment about what you did, or an attitude, or a set, or a technique. Is there anything that you've noticed in your short time there, like being a different? Um, what I'm bringing to the table. I mean, <laughs> I'm uh, I'm bringing, I guess, a new competition for for Hubie and Leon, of course, yeah. and Reagan. Um. But what they would think, I don't know. I, I guess I would just like just basically just new competition. To be honest, <laughs> I'm not I'm not really sure how to how to kind are, of answer that. Are you good at gymnastics? Because your parents can you can you do some rings and stuff and show off in them? I could probably just do kind of what you did. <laughs> just get oh, up on the thing. <laughs> no, just put, just like get up on this, the thing. But, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> I've I've only done gymnastics when I was like literally like around four or five years old. I, I, was, I didn't actually go professionally into it. <laughs> okay, cool.
All right. I got to go back. B, I can't believe you dropped the initiation word back there. You know you can't say that word nowadays, man. I don't know. You can say initiation. You just can't say hazing. Oh, is that what it is? I mean, there's there there's a lot of ambiguity, ambiguity there, so I don't know. I mean, uh, all right. So, <laughs> so, I, so I went and asked two questions at the same time, and then I just chose one of them. Ilya, let's go back. So what's the initiation process? When you first come to ASU, does anybody make you do anything? Uh, that you don't want to do that's uncomfortable how do they make you uh, get up in front of the team and sing an embarrassing song what do you do oh uh, no not really but we do have to learn a song uh, it's just kind of in the asu boys we just have to <laughs> we have to learn like one of our songs uh but other than that there's really not much hazing besides we have to like we just have to like uh, as a tradition all the uh, freshman boys we just have to like shave our hair uh, for before uh, NCs or Pac-12s, uh, but other than that, it, that's pretty much it. There's really, there's really not much. What's the first words that Bob said to you on deck? You walked on deck first practice after you've been recruited. What's the first thing he said? He said, "Hey, you made it." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna be like ten five hundreds. All right, yeah. no. ready go. No, the first, my very first practice was it. It was just like I think just an underwater set. <laughs> I thought it was going to be your mind now, but yeah, exactly. it seems like uh, you've got a lot of confidence that you can make it through all of Bob's workouts now. So hopefully <laughs> we can use that as a taunt and uh, <laughs> he's going to deliver some some pain your way. Oh, yeah, I, I hope so, too. And that's how like that's how we get better. <laughs> so what do you think? Um, I'm curious what you think. And then I'm curious what maybe you've heard from your coaches. Um especially at ASU as first got there. What are, what do you think are your biggest areas for improvement? What do you think they are and what do your coaches think they are and have they communicated that to you yet? So I think one of the biggest improvements is of course, like underwaters for sure. Mm. Uh, Cause like uh, every time we try to do a kick set, like uh if it's like a warm up kick set, like I'm fine with that. And then like, as the kick set progresses into the hard stuff, it's uh i try to keep up with the big guys but just like uh my legs are just like slowly a little bit get tired i don't know if it's from like the workouts that we've been doing but i don't know but uh, definitely underwaters and uh and also like when i get tired i think i like short shorten my stroke so i believe just elongate it maybe give us an example of what you mean so what, like what's a set and like a number four you're like half a meter behind like what's an example specifically of of how you're not keeping up with the big guys because i mean dude you're 23 250 flyer you know you're pretty good so i mean uh so no if it's like 25s or 50s like underwaters or something that uh, yeah i can keep up with them but i'm talking about like let's just say four 200s we would do your main stroke kick so i'd be fly yep. and um it would just like the, the first one would be like chill. Everyone's together. And then like two, three and four, like two, they would be getting like a little bit off. And then like, I would try to keep up with them like the first 75 and then they just like blast off. Like it's, they just like, uh, don't really get as tired. Wow. But right. this was coming from the guy that went from eighth to fourth, like B was saying, and that 200 fly long course, one of the, I don't know, people would, often say that's one of the most grueling events and you're just hammering home at the end, increasing that tempo. So I guess what was going through your mind maybe at that race specifically and, and how does that translate to some of the things that you just mentioned that you're working on? Uh, yeah, the final, the final 50. Uh, yeah, I just, uh, I just like, uh, that was the kind of, that was kind of the, the not the rhythm the the pattern that uh, that was at worlds kind of just bring it home the final 50 or something like that um and the, yeah like my underwaters i remember the final 50 it was it was trying trying to be pretty long trying to catch up to those guys and of course i want to keep uh like keep the same distance but i like have more power to the kick so that it's like uh so i can like get up there faster if you've been listening to Social Kick for a while, you know that we haven't been doing ad reads on this show. But as we've grown, we want to create more Social Kick content, and we want to do so by partnering with the right brands that we actually believe make good products. Well, we found one with the Magic 5. We love this product, and we're happy to partner with the Magic 5. Go to themagic5.com slash socialkick. 
I want to know about uh, the other side of of training. So, I mean, obviously, like coming from the program like Sandpipers, um, there's got to be some strengths that you developed there. Uh, what are the things that you think are really great um, assets of yours to be able to bring into a new training group? What do you do really well? What What do you think that? And is there anything that like today? you might be the best on the team at ASU. Like, I mean, just for example, I got really good at holding my breath and I would say like, I was the best on the team at Auburn holding my breath in, in my era, you know, just doing underwater work, especially like for, for long periods of time, which was critical for sprinting. So like, what are the things that um, today you feel like are like super strong suits of yours? I feel like uh, by the end of like hard sprint sets, like fifties or something, I can, uh, <laughs> I don't really want to, I just like, uh, Flex I kinda, on. Do I kinda, it. I kind of just, I don't know. I want to say I kind of, well, they might say saving up, but I just recover. <laughs> I recover a little bit quicker than them. And then they get mad when I beat them all at the end, like on some sets, not all of them. And, and they just say that I save up, even though I just, I don't know. I try to just recover quicker. <laughs> All right, so what's the biggest pet peeve then of yours for people in training? Because if uh, mine would probably be people that save up and only go fast on the last one, what's what annoys you the most from people in practice? Oh, when they leave early. That is so annoying, especially on the fast stuff. It is extremely annoying. Like, it, it's just like you can see the night and you can go. You don't have to go on the eight and a half. Like, it's just... <laughs> It takes a second and a half to get down sometimes, you know? <laughs> yeah, but sometimes for them, it's just like, they just go right away. They just push, they don't, don't sink. Yeah. 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 yeah See, when I, I, when I was training, I, I was definitely the person that went out. I still swim like this. I just go out and just die. And then I'm someone with horrible stroke, just the rest of workout. And, and then there's people, we'll say like you, the save-ups, that really <laughs> finish strong. But I always wonder, or now I think about it, I'm like, you know, that's how Sun Yang was training when I was with him. And, and it's one of those where it's like, okay, is this really, you know, a, such a bad thing? Or is it actually teaching you to finish strong, maintain and like gut, gauge your overall, I don't know, volume a little bit better so you can have more consistent stroke patterns, higher intensities throughout the whole workout versus me where I do like 50% all out and then 50% is absolute garbage. So can you defend yourself finishing strong like that? And do you think it's, I don't know, maybe a reason why you finish so strong in your races? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I do. Uh, I think I agree on the, uh, the volume part, maybe like increase it, but of course I am uh, trying to fix that, like not actually like save up to go just fast every single time and then like end faster um that's like what i'm also like as well trying to trying to work for so that it's not like so that i don't want people to get angry with me <laughs> i feel like i've heard bob talk about that before too about um executing at a high level and training doing um like maintaining the same form throughout and i i think specifically when i heard him talk about it he was talking about like the way that michael would maintain underwater is throughout a workout you mentioned you know that that it's like yeah the deep into a workout are you able to hold the same kick no kick out number are you able to hold the same distance per stroke and then we're hearing a different um we're hearing uh, that from Virginia, for example, too, where, uh, you know, their their women's team that's been really successful in the last few years, they've done a lot um, of work focusing on just holding a lot of water with each um, particular stroke. So, I mean, I feel like you're obviously in the right place um, to continue to evolve on on that um you know, just on, on those fronts, that's just going to take all, all your events to the, to the next level. I'm stricken though, by the fact that you can go 23 low 50 fly and you also go as fast in a 200 fly. Like that's, that's quite a rarity. So yeah, I'm jealous. Uh, just a variety of events. <laughs> I, I have a question about your decision to, to go and swim 
in um in the states so not many canadians head down to some of the ncaa system you, maggie's rc prime and then josh and yourself did it and sid uh sydney did it and taylor i guess a few now recently but it has been a tradition right a lot of canadians because you got good national training centers out in canada and you go up what was your and, and there's good funding and good support i mean it, it, when you get carded in canada it's it's it's, it's good it's decent so i mean i am going to show my canadian bias here you know with my 2000 track suits and stuff but this this is coming up for you you know this is this is on your radar right we an olympic year for canada and and yeah and you made a big decision to change your program to go to a new program new environment one year out and canadian trials are normally what in april you're not far away to end it up so it's, it's a, it was a big decision talk to us about that talk to us about about what this weighed on you and the move you did i'm talking of yeah. who's in charge of swimming canada now i'm interested yeah, yeah. Uh, so actually, I actually uh, lived in the U.S. my whole life. Right. I, I was just, I was just kind of just born in Canada because of uh, the whole like uh, Cirque du Soleil. Like my parents were there, and then we went to Vegas. That's where like they settled down for the Cirque du Soleil thing. Yeah. Um, so I, I lived. Yeah, I just lived like in the in the U.S. my whole life, and that's like that's kind of like the, the whole move thing yeah um but yeah for the olympic year for sure we i do i am gonna uh, represent canada in the olympics yep. and that's gonna be a real uh it's gonna be like uh, a really good great honor of course yeah. to represent a country uh especially on such a big level um and it just it would be it would be really really good you know what my question is more about the decision that you made to change the environment uh, you know, uh, a year before the Olympics, you know, like you things are going oh, great and oh, you change oh. it. Obviously, it's a fantastic environment, but this is a critical year. And often people in my red shirt set out, you know, did you consider oh, oh, doing oh. it at all? You know, it's a big change. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, I didn't, I didn't understand. No, that. sorry. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, of course, uh, yeah, big change from Sandpipers to, to college. I was actually thinking of maybe taking a gap year, focus right. on the Olympics. Right. But I then I thought again about, you know what, maybe it'll be good, you know, training with the top athletes, mm -hmm. uh, getting uh, getting the work done, like, with a whole different team. Um, I thought, I just thought about, like, the many, like, the pros, uh, the pros and the cons. Um, but definitely, def I saw a lot of the pros, uh, yeah. just, uh, trying to change the environment, get new training in. Yeah. And, um, that's kind of, that's what I think. That's good. The, the Canadian women have been the, you know, talk of maybe the last few international meets with, you know, <laughs> them rising and rising and having all these great stars. Now we have you, we have Josh Liendo and kind of the Canadian men coming up too. Um, can you talk us through a little bit more about, you know, some of the young male Canadian swimmers and kind of what the talk is within the team about kind of where the country is going? Uh, I believe, yes, we are. <laughs> I think uh, we're definitely rising in uh, to have more medal counts. We have uh, we have an IAMer, a young IAMer named uh, Lauren. I think you guys maybe learned, heard about him. Yeah, oh, yeah he yeah really really good 400 i am he's uh <laughs> i definitely want want to see a 410 in the near future from him because nice. he he can definitely do it it's really fast and then uh we have a i, I actually don't really know many of the junior guys i only know like lauren and then uh, we have philip which is my roommate <laughs> he's uh he's really good at uh butterfly um the primarily like the 100 and the 50. So yeah, and he's for sure getting faster. You know, he has a what fifty-two high hundred fly. He can definitely get that down, so that he can be like with us. Um, that's yeah. I think that's we definitely and like the girls. I think it was what Ella Jansen or something like that. Uh, she she's also like picking up speed. I saw as well from the girls' side. We definitely have a chance uh, with like when the juniors are going to be seniors. It, we definitely have chances, I believe, in meddling. Uh, I so um, this side note, this is from Craig Hutchison, who is not who is a Canadian Olympic swimmer who was born in Montreal, went to Arizona State, swam in Arizona State, and represented in Canada. So, dude, it's it, you're you really know, on the awesome. path of legends, man. And this is his own. He's six foot seven, so it doesn't fit me. So it's Ooh, not on the <laughs> Yeah, He's but high. the Montreal guy who swam at ASU Great. back in two thousand and two thousand, maybe. So yeah. Let's go. Mm -hmm. um, do you 
do you are you are you a swimming nerd? Do you look at the history of of ASU swimming of, of what of Ron and what he did at, at Sandpiper over his career? What's going on at Canada? Are you are you are you do you look back at the legends of the sport, or you just go and you have fun swimming and you kick ass? What, what's your swim nerd level? Uh, my swim nerd level is to be honest, just uh, I think. Uh, kind of the current generation and a little bit of the past around like Michael Phelps era, like yeah. Michael Phelps, Lochte, uh, there was Ian Thorpe and stuff, kind of right. that body suit level. But yeah, like looking back at it, like our past, I, I, to be honest, I don't know. I do know Ron, Ron was a swimmer. Uh, he was a breaststroker for UNLV, yeah. but that's pretty, that's pretty much all the history. And I just kind of just try to have fun and swim. So when were you when you were coming up? Kind of who were you looking to as a role model, or who did you? I don't know. Maybe even try to model your stroke and your swimming style. Like I remember, you know, when I was swimming, I th I think every swimmer probably has like one Olympian that they imagine that they're trying to swim like, whether it's like the race strategy or even the technique. Who, who's that person for you? Uh, of course, like of course, everyone's gonna say this. It was Michael Phelps, of course. It was he was literally like one of the best in the generation. Uh, and then slowly it became uh, Caleb Dressel as well. The from like uh, what two two years ago, he was uh, just amazing breakout swimmer. Uh, Nineteen, I mean eighteen, straight out of uh, high school, just did amazing. I'd say double A's. So yeah, Michael Phelps and Dressel, of course. So you're saying you ate ten thousand calories a day. And you keep your race suit strings, your drawstring out of your suit when you race. Those are the oh, few no. things that you took on. <laughs> no, <laughs> I did not take that on that. <laughs> but but there's a question I wanted to ask. What is it specifically, maybe what Michael did that that you know you looked up to and you like to do? How he swam his races, how he was on his blocks, how he, how his chin went across the front, how he you know what was it particularly about him that maybe you know you look at and think of right now when you see Michael swim fly. Definitely, like the, of course, like let's go, like go back, going back to the underwaters. His his underwaters were insane, and yeah. just like his stroke, the way how long it was, how like how he just like kept jumping like with each stroke forward. Um, just like yeah, just I kind of just looked up on like how he swam fly. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. So as someone, you know, when we were growing up, we weren't you know privy to have such great video content. You know, we'd get some vhs tapes and watch those luke he probably had a projector or some nonsense like that that he'd probably go through and watch old clips of i don't know who'd you watch uh johnny weissmuller luke is that kind of the the guy you were looking <laughs> yeah, up to? absolutely yeah me and johnny were like this man <laughs> so someone that's much younger than us when you're like you said you're watching phelps fly you're trying to swim like him were you like on youtube watching videos of him swim or you know what what types of things did you use or was it just kind of oh i just watch him at you know the olympics like we all do Oh, no, yeah, I would watch, I would look back at all, like, uh, not all of them, but mo most of the uh, clips from, of course, back in the Olympics. Uh, I think I only watched him live Olympics was, like, 2016. That's pretty much it. Other than that, I would just always just watch his clips. I actually read one of his, like, his Michael Phelps books. I, I read one of those when I was little, too. So when you're going 49 in 100 fly? 49. Uh... Just, I guess, whenever it happens, <laughs> hopefully yeah, by like next that. year. Hopefully by next year, but just whenever it happens, you know. Uh, twenty-three, two, and a one, and a one fifty-three back offing two hundred flies. It'd be, it'd be fun. I like it. Yeah. Well, do you care about time goals? I mean, if somebody who answers whenever it happens. I mean, like I understand that perspective, and I think it's, you know, it's not within your control. Like the only thing that you control is your preparation, your effort, your execution, and the time will will be what it is. Uh, but do you do you have goal times and do you uh, think that that's yeah. important part? Uh, yeah, of course it, it is because if you don't know like what you're striving for, it's just like it's just like, oh, I got this time. Like you you want you want goals because then like you're more motivated during practice to get those times. <laughs> so have you set goals already for this season? You don't have to share them, but I'm um, curious what you have kind of. Um, what the thought process is and do, do you do that for short course and long course do you do it on a season by season basis um, or do you just kind of like look further into the future 
So I don't have goals yet for this season, but for long course and short course, I do set goals in my mind, of course, all the time. And do you, what is, what's, um, what has been your coach's approach? Is that something that you guys do jointly? Do they put it on you to determine what your goals are first and you make a proposal? Um, or is there kind of like a, their first proposal to you here, Ilya, like you should be looking higher. You should be, you know, setting your goals here or are you ever like, yeah, no, I'm going to go screw 49. I'm going 48 in the hundred fly. Ask me that question, Luke. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so uh, to, to be honest, uh, me and uh, the other coaches, we actually have not talked about ta time goals at all. Maybe we will throughout the year, but for now, since the, it's the beginning yet, uh, we haven't really talked about that. So I've kind of just been like trying to think of like what I need to go, what I want to go, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Have you had much experience at yards and swimming in yards? Oh, yeah. My yeah <laughs> uh, anyway, i have a question for you it's interesting about setting goals i think it's the mind it's the attitude that you might take or one takes and i can see value in both like we spoke to cam mcavoy he just did a best time 2106 and his next goal he told us was 20 20.99 he didn't say 20.89 breaking the world record he went 20.99 and he says because he recognizes and respects the you know, how hard it is to drop that time in the 53 and he's being, you know, to him, setting his expectations that work best for him. Whereas you have other 53 stylers who set a 20.70 goal time, even though their best time is 21 mid or something. And, you know, they're going beyond and that works best for their training and their attitude. So I can see both sides of like, you know, being cautious, yet optimistic, being confident, yet, you know, realistic, setting yourself. It's, it's an interesting discussion. I just want to make the point. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about within practice? I know it's more and more common of people to talk about, like B was saying, you're, you're thinking about execution, like what you're thinking about in practice. Are you someone that likes to make, I don't know, goals during a practice? Like, all right, here's someone gives a set and you're like, okay, I'm going to hold these things or, okay, I'm going to, you get the practice ahead of time and this is what I'm looking to accomplish here. Or are you just like, Hey, I'm just going to get in there and go for it. Um, we do go over the sets before practice. So I kind of just, uh, put it, put it like to like the side of my, to the side of my mind to like, uh, what I need to go, what I want to accomplish during this set. I want to shift gears a bit. Um, we talked earlier about just like who, how you consumed, um, content from, like Luke was mentioning, or you're watching YouTube's about Phelps and everything. And um, it reminded me that it's um, like, it's pretty new still. Like the iPhone only came out in 2007. YouTube's only been like really a big thing for about 10 years, maybe, even though it seems like it's been a long time. And so uh, <clears throat> we live in an era now where like not even, not only are all the big meets, all the races available online to watch and consume, but also like all the in-season meets are getting to that point too which is awesome to have a record of it but at the same time it's like everything's further and further connected so there's like an expectation that you know you're on social media and um and so now it's like you know there used to be a an access problem and now it's like an overexposure problem and so i'm just curious like what's your what's your approach to being connected and um especially as somebody who like went to school virtually full time, you know, until like now, now you're actually, you know, edu being educated amongst real humans <laughs> in person. So um, what's your, what's your policy, personal policy? How do you keep yourself kind of in ch on track and in check for like when you need to be off screen and how, how do you like, you know, consume it or don't consume it as it, as you come into big meets and stuff? Uh, so like, how do I get connected with like through, through videos? Is that what you're asking? I just mean like, what's your social media approach? Uh, and, um, oh, oh, you know, oh. do you, do you, do you set some boundaries for yourself? On oh, that? okay. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> you know, when it comes to social media, I kind of, so uh, of course I stay connected, stay on social media, see what, like, see what everyone's posting or anything. Uh, but when it comes down to like competitions or stuff, I try to like just completely avoid it. And, um, I kind of just, yeah, just stay, just stay. I, I usually just stay with, within the social media though, but when it comes to competitions, just not. Yeah. 
not really. Hmm. So uh, it, it is a lot of pressure with social media and news and articles and hype. Um, there's a there's a friend of the show um, who's also could have swam for Canada. He he came fourth in the world's when he was 17 years old, and then he started swimming at Auburn right afterwards. A guy called George Ravel. And, and um, so he walked on deck at Auburn, and they were very, very good. And he was he was the fourth best 200 IM in the world in, 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 um, at that point. And he handled the pressure really well. Brian knows he was his teammate. He handled the pressure well. He, 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 he kept himself, and he was humble and worked hard, and ended up, you know, doing having an excellent career. Um, you know, there's no social media around there, and he and there's you know, no headlines of news swimming articles. How do you how do you just stay with that? How do you keep grounded? Who's your support team? Who who are your people? Is it your parents, your, your your siblings, your coaches, your friends? How do, how do you ground yourself and keep yourself going? Uh, yeah, my uh, my mom and my my brother, they always kind of they they keep me like grounded, you know, just yeah. like, and of course, also me. Like I know that like like all oh, fourth in the world that's 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 like all that's all great you know it's good um good like title to have but uh not even a title just this <laughs> it's a good thing to have but um i kind of i kind of know like like the next thing uh, like after that like world's competition i'm like okay what can i do better what i need to be what i need to do better like i'm not just gonna go gloat around you know i'm just like i'm gonna just go back sh straight back to work you know yeah what 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 do you do besides from? Are you a gamer? Are you a sports uh, guy? What do you do? Uh, I usually, uh, to be honest, yeah, I am kind of a gamer, but I, yeah. to be honest, I like just hanging out with my with my roommates. I kind of, I like talking, laughing. That's kind of, uh, and video games is literally like probably like the final thing if I got nothing else better to do. Yeah, I kind of it's either video games or just watch a movie. What's the funniest thing your roommates told you this week? Oh shoot! <laughs> there was a lot. Uh, go. I don't. I don't really have one at the top of my head right now. I, guess. I don't go. All right, I got a question bathroom. for you guys. Don't go to. <laughs> well, that's right. There's a TikTok trend going on right now, and apparently, they go around asking men, "How often do you think of the Roman Empire?" So, oh. gentlemen, how often do you think of the Roman Empire? Answer it. it. You. John, how often that. do you think of the Roman Empire? Never. Brian. When the movie Gladiator comes on. <laughs> Ilya. Uh, all the time in the everyday world. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a TikTok well, uh, trend, and that's what people are doing. And um, I don't yeah, know. I kind of what we're I kinda, I kinda, I, I kind of like just like saw one video about it, so I have no clue about it, like anything, what it means or anything. <laughs> Is there a background meaning, Luke? I just found out about today too, Ilya, and I, then I thought back about my week, and I, I never think about the road. Wait, I just had Roma tomatoes. I use Roman numerals when I was ordering on Wednesday, and uh, you know, like maybe we do kind of, you know. And oh, I just saw uh, Latin doing a Cam McAvoy edit, and the Latin was on it. So like maybe we kind of subtly think about the Roman Empire. Oh. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think about gladiator. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ilya, when you're looking at teammates, are you looking for someone like Luke that's going to be having your brain going the weirdest directions of all time? Or what type of teammates do you like? I mean, the reason I bring this up, you know, Claire, like we mentioned earlier, asked who's your favorite teammate. Um, and we know teammates are a huge part of what, what gets you to practice, what makes it fun. Do you Definitely. like the people like Luke that are asking these random things? Do you like to have the, the serious type in your lane? Oh, well, in, when, it, when it comes to practice, I, I kind of do like the the serious ones because like i don't want those weird questions during practice like i'm kind of i'm trying to no i'm trying to focus no i and then like no i would love to have luke like outside of practice when i'm already trying <laughs> like relaxed when i don't have anything else better to do <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just have the weird questions <laughs> That's perfect because Luke doesn't swim anymore. So, I'm back. <laughs> hey, he found a pool after I how many years pool. in New York? Two or three years. He finally found a pool. Don't dude, worry. Four dollars to swim. It's so good. That's really good, man. Four dollars. Deal. It is. Right. It's a deal. I'll tell you, man. And and Kate Douglas said she wants to go back and live there because she's she's from not far from where Luke lives now, and uh, maybe that means she's gonna uh, put swimming. Uh, 
to to the side for the rest of her life. Exactly. What about you, Ilya? Are you what's your what what do you think um forty year old Ilya is gonna be uh doing? What's your relationship with the water gonna be like after you're done swimming? Uh probably like I definitely wanna cause I know like the body after like such a long time it still needs like some type of workout. I can't just like sit on the couch and not do anything. So I'll, I'll probably like swim a couple times a week maybe. But to be honest, I kind of want to just go into lifting, to be honest. I, I'm a big gym guy, so I might just I might just do that. You know, not not like not like just briefed up like Mr. Olympia or something, but just like, you know, something I want to do. Yeah, man. Have like you fun. have you watched the Arnold Netflix doc? Oh, yeah, it's so good. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you ever just put it on a speedo in the mirror and flex? <laughs> <You're posing. laughs> maybe just like after i get out of the shower maybe <laughs> okay that. tmi <laughs> no 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 no, no with the towel on. <laughs> we, oh. i don't remember what you did were you flexing down in your world's walkout video behind you what was your uh, oh, prompts or thing that you were doing i was i did i did the biceps i did the pointing and then I mean, just cross my arms. That's what yeah, I did. The, the pec blowout, cr- arm cross. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we asked Catherine Birkoff about that. And, and talk us about that. How do you, do you all line up? The whole Team Canada stands up and lines up and you're all like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And you, uh, somebody's watching you. How do you decide what you're doing? And does everybody on Team Canada have to do it? Or just those who are probably going to make finals? Uh, actually, everyone at Worlds uh, kind of like they don't have to, but it's kind of like uh, I think it's part of the process where you have to have a uh, walkout song so that when you do make semis or finals, they post it like in the background of just and yeah, just like the ideas about it is just like it's just on the spot to be honest. Yeah. Or some people have it like uh, already like set up. What was the best one you saw? Or you, you... Uh, I think I saw either Finley or Leendo. They did like the they did like a bone arrow or something. That oh was yeah, cool. yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Who's the goofiest yeah. person on Team Canada? Goofiest Male or female? Per- yeah, the funniest person. person. Yeah. Oh, uh, one of the brush strokers, uh, James. <laughs> his, uh, his last name's like uh, Dur Dur-Gasoff or something like that. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Kind of what was his what, what was his uh walkout video oh i had no clue <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually have no idea wait luke what would you do what would you what would yours be get on the rings come on now <laughs> get on the rings and fail no but you gotta think oh. about how it's being used you know <laughs> i would i think what i would try to do is see if i could um like zoom all the way in and it like <laughs> do the eyeball i would just like zoom my eyeball all the way into the camera if there was a way for me to do it that's what if i, I was do. 20 years old i would be that a hole who'd be like trying to out psych everybody like you're going down you're going down because you're being big and bold behind the blocks right so you can use it like which, a psycho video which wouldn't work at all but yeah no not <laughs> and it's muted so you're just... <laughs> <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> come on luke you're better than that <laughs> John, you had a follow-up that was more structured? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's come and gone a little bit, but you mentioned, uh, you know, really being a gym guy. Um, maybe talk us about that transition from maybe some of the things you're doing at Sandpiper. You know, mm-hmm. obviously a great a great program, more known for distance. Now, it's starting to change a little, but a lot of people don't associate gym and distance swimming still. So maybe what it was like there and, and what you're kind of getting your, your teeth into at ASU. Um, so, yeah uh it is uh the lifting is definitely different from sandpipers uh because at sandpipers we do uh we do we would do like bulgarian uh, like split squat or something and then there would be benching or dumbbell press and uh as well as like squats uh, like back squat but here it is it's almost the same thing except that instead of back squat it's front squat like most of most of the workouts it's for swim here i believe Right. Like it's uh, like some of the exercises are like focusing on those muscle groups that you use during swimming. Keep going. Yeah. I'm curious. No more oh, details. Oh, oh. Like, what, yeah, what I, I want to know more about that. Like, like what? Exactly. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, okay. So we got, like I said, uh, oh yeah, we also do cleans. I've never done cleans before. So I'm, I'm still an amateur at that. Uh, but yeah, apparently like cleans are pretty good. Like I, don't, I feel it in my traps. I don't know if it's like, 
if, it, if that's what it's for but <laughs> that's i use that and then uh there's also you do it from the floor from the floor or hang position uh from the floor like All right. you go down to the floor and then kind of bring it up uh-huh. and then um uh, as well as like the the uh like the hang the hanging position as well like where you hold it by like your uh thighs yeah uh and then there's also like this we would do of course like chin-ups for like the biceps but there's also like a machine where you would just like pull it down and then like slowly go up with like the weight so like the weight's heavy and like you kind of one at a time yeah and then there's also like load right john yep yeah yeah and then uh there's also like back extensions for i'm guessing breaststroke or something like to strengthen your back Hmm. all right Mm -hmm. What uh? So you said that uh, later in life you're going to become a bodybuilder, right? So <laughs> not a bodybuilder. <laughs> just work. Just try to work out. <laughs> like a, a time. <laughs> Are you one of those guys who gets swole the second you walk in and look at the weights, or like what's uh what's um what's what's your biggest strong suit in the gym? What are you the best at? Uh, definitely, definitely, uh, chest. I love, I love bench and climb bench is anything on chest. <laughs> That's, those are my favorite exercises. So you're trying to get ready for spring break? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the spring you... break destination now? Um, yeah. does everybody go over to, uh, uh, Lake Havasu? Where's uh what's what or does even like take does anybody at ASU take a spring break? What do you do in Vegas? What do you what are you planning on doing after NCs next year? That's probably a big year, Olympic year. Uh, but, you know. yeah, I think just after NCs, I think it's just back to training. I don't think there is a break, <laughs> to be oh. honest. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you enjoy racing? What other strokes do you enjoy racing or events you enjoy racing besides any of the flies? uh breaststroke i i really i i I love racing breaststroke against uh leon it's it's really it's really fun i feel like uh kind of i'm trying to just get the movements down and stuff on that and uh sprint freestyle as well talks about the the movements down is is it leon's continuous forward momentum that he always seems to maintain how long it is what is it about it that you like seeing in him and you try to emulate uh i think it's yeah just like how like how he shoots forward and then yeah. uh, i try to as well like um and also like the kick behind just have a strong kick behind too so that you could glide forward i believe uh, sh- yeah so i kind of kind of just try to race him in that does he does he share and add tips or does he you know or it's like push you and i mean i had a teammate who used to make sure i was up in practice and going it when i was a freshman is he pushing you for that giving you tips what's he like next to him um no no there there is no tips uh i kind of just try to race him trying to just just be right next to him that's pretty yeah. much it the, yeah. so what are we thinking 2im third event for college i really hope so either that or 500 free <laughs> either one wow what, what, what's that schedule like guys for, for 500 free to fly 50 free i believe on the first day yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, day one, fifty free, two IM, five hundred free. Yeah, so, yeah. but actually, like that's a <clears throat> we always talk about this a few times. The, the schedule, uh, the schedule at NCAA is now is a little bit more favorable um, than it has been, and it, I like the fact that the sports evolved some to spread it out and get better quality in the racing. But I've always been an advocate that we should change the order some, and like at the big meets in the summer, you get a different order, and it's like some years yeah. it's a five day meet, some it's a seven to eight day meet. Um, semifinals like just take so much more out of you. But I don't know. Is there like I, like it always annoyed me when the fifty free was at the very end of the meet um because i felt like uh, there was so much energy and then you come in and then you know you maybe race early and then you're standing in the stands cheering for a bit and you're like drained by energy by the time the 50 free comes around and it's like kind of a tough thing that you got to manage um as somebody who swam that event primarily so like is there an ideal event order for you like which one do you want to have first which one are you okay with like leaving it to last because you want to get into the meet and get the nerve shaken off and all that uh i think like like it is at worlds i think uh i'm fine with two fly is it it's two fly last i believe right or is it middle i think it's last and then the end for sure okay yeah yeah, okay yeah 
yeah and then uh yeah i'm fine with as well as like the 100 i'm fine with the schedule 100 fly in the middle and then just whatever it is at the beginning just try and just get a feel for it hmm. is 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 swimming enjoyable a swim meets fun do you think they're fun do you would you go to a swim meet if you weren't taking part would you go watch women's ncs would you go and watch us trials would, would you go and watch a fast meet on tv I, do you, you turn it on yeah yeah, I would. If it uh, if it's not on TV, I definitely would go watch uh, either U.S. Trials or just anything, anything really fun. If yeah, other than, but swim meets are fun. I I love uh, like racing in them, watching them. It's really fun. Right, it's good okay, let's let's compare it against your parents being in Cirque du Soleil. <laughs> The totally different entertainment value, I I think. I mean, they're different. They're different methods. It depends how how nerdy you are on swimming. But I think objectively, to the casual person, to, you know, we're not selling out hundreds of thousands of tickets to go to an event <laughs> um, and swimming uh, the way that you know people flock to you know entertainment, and acrobatics, and and that sort of thing. So, uh, what do, what do they think? Like, do they think swim meets are fun? Um, uh, they think it's really well for our like club swim meets and they thought it was like really loud and it was it was like in our like palo verde it was really loud very hot and it was like <laughs> annoying you know it was just like dude i just want to leave <laughs> like it's just such a relief to come back home uh but uh, like a competition like a normal like like high competition like or or just like this like pro series or something it's definitely way better like not as crowded it's just like it's really fun to watch i mean they're they're see they're there to like watch me so i mean they're either way they're excited are there any things thinking about how your parents described going to like club meets mm -hmm. and age group meets you're more familiar with that setting than we are are there things you think they could change to make it more enjoyable for parents and, and you swimmers whether it's just like hey let's break it up more so it's just like two hour segments at a time um i would just say uh crowd control like kind of if you're so son or daughter is not swimming kind of don't be in the building or something just wait outside <laughs> to be honest um but other than that uh i have i have, i'm not i'm not the right person to ask <laughs> i don't know <laughs> yeah. well i i do want to hear i want to go back a little bit and i want to hear a little bit about your your origin story you know if you're a superhero um so i, I when i read that your parents went sick and then they moved to vegas from montreal um, I naturally, I thought, oh, maybe they're synchro swimmers because you're a swimmer. And a lot of swimmers and Canadian synchro team, sorry, artistic swimming team, did after their career go and, and, and swim at, at Cirque in Vegas. And I know about three or four people who did that. Um, what was your origin story into sport, into swimming? Was there any interest in swimming at all as a kid from your parents or you just fell into the sport and this is what came out? Talk, talk about your origin story. Yeah. So when so at the at first time uh my parents were actually trying out we were trying to look for since i came from a gymnastics acrobatic family we were looking for that and then we we're mm -hmm. trying to see what would be good and i don't really know much details but I, of course i guess i guess it wasn't it i was pretty i was pretty athletic as a child so right. uh they yeah they were just like okay well i guess uh we don't want to we don't want to go to this one that we don't yeah and then they, uh, we kind of switched uh, sports and we, uh, my mom just put me like into swimming and she saw that I was actually like not bad at it. You know, I was like four or five years old. She thought I was, she thought I was like pretty good at it. And uh, I kind of just like went from there, like slowly just trying to rise up. You know, I was working out with my dad when I was little. Uh, well, of course not weights, just like dry land stuff. And, um, I kind of just like rose from there. I did try like soccer for a season, which was pretty fun. I don't, I don't know why. I think I, oh, I was like really interested in it. I believe I kind of just did that for a season, and I kind of yeah, I kind of just that's kind of how I rose up, just like slowly, slowly trying to get better at swimming. How how much of the Montreal culture did your parents put in you? Because I knew you left there very young, but to both Quebecois. So, uh, do you eat poutine and 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 do you go to sugar and <laughs> no, all? My, no, my my parents are Ukrainian, so they put oh, that the Ukrainian. Ukrainian. They put yeah, they put the Ukrainian culture in me. <laughs> Why did you go to McGill? I don't get it. I mean, there was the obvious choice. That, that was a hard decision, wasn't it? McGill and, and the ASU. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very oh, yeah. tough choice. A very tough choice. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, um, 
I'm curious about what what success looks like for you. So, I mean, you're successful on a world level, you know, as a high schooler. And um, but like, how long do you see yourself swimming? What is what does success like look like for you next summer? What is the long term plan for you in the sport? Um, I kind of I do my long term plan is I I just I want to swim really fast. Just I, I like the the normal kind of age I see for when most people retire is around like what thirty like from pro swimming. So uh, that's when I that's to be honest that's when uh that's when like that's the age I want to get up to. And uh, kind of like what my progression would be, how like, uh, to be honest, just like what time will tell. I guess I'll just got to put in the work and see how it goes from there. I can't really tell like what, how, like what's next going to be. I'm not, <laughs> can't see the future, of course, but you know, I kind of, I'm just going to see as time progresses. Yep. Right on. All right, man. Well, we've got a few rapid fire questions and then we'll wrap it up. What's the hardest race in swimming? 400 I am for sure. Olympic gold or world record? Uh, world record. <laughs> Do you pee in the pool? Uh, yeah, who doesn't? <laughs> what's the what's the hardest sandpiper set you ever did? Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, I think it's ooh, there there was one time we had a 3 100s it was like no sorry five 100s i am on like a 109 base and then after that it was like i think we took like a 30 second break and it was like 300 i am for time and we did that like three times <laughs> it was really hard okay for or against fly with paddles against i don't really like it what can you go in a 50 meter underwater with fins Ooh. 20 or under 20 if we're talking about short course yards what's the best swim that you've ever seen in person uh summer's summer mcintosh's uh world record in uh trials hmm. okay and when you when you're done uh, for, swim, for free one, two. Yeah. okay for free for free yeah. when you're done swimming what are you not going to miss waking up early <laughs> at 5 a.m all right um this is a sandpipers question and an asu question but a selfish one uh how much social kick did you do at sandpipers how much social kick is happening at asu and how much is the right amount of social kick uh okay so there was no social kick in sandpipers <laughs> and i have not been at asu long enough uh for <laughs> i have not been at asu long enough to know how much social kick we have here we haven't done one yet and the right amount of social kick is around like a 500 i love it well we, 500 we can we can deal with we'll do a little bit more but that's fine because <laughs> we're retired and luke doesn't go to the pool anyway so no. oh yeah um Super fun to get to connect with you. It's always fun to watch athletes like you, um, see yep. you on deck, see where you're taking the sport and um, really excited <laughs> for you in the new environment and a big year ahead. Uh, keep so keep doing some entertaining stuff, man. We'll be uh, rooting for you here and you're welcome back anytime. Thanks for hanging out. Yeah, awesome. thank you so much. All right, that's it for this episode of Social Kick. We'll see you next time. Hey everybody, thanks for hanging out with us. If you're enjoying Social Kick, Tell your friends about it, and be sure to tell us what you liked by leaving a comment, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on Instagram, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Social Kick, and you can find all of our content on our website.